Recently, I put out a tutorial on using Blender, a bit like Substance Designer. One of the key things to make that happen is to place an orthographic camera above the geometry that you've got, and then use emission shaders for your various texture passes, like base color and roughness. Another key thing to make it behave a little bit more like Substance Designer is to have our bump output show like a normal map texture. In regards to that bit, there was a great comment from Kent Trammell, who is an awesome artist and tutorial creator over at CG Cookie. He talked about getting this set up to work in more cases and not just on a flat plane facing up. And it's thanks to that comment that has sent me back down this road to explore this further. So we'll take a look in this video at combining both geometry and textures together, which really extends the power of what we can do with this kind of setup to create our normal maps. Also covered in this video is a way to make some global changes to every material at once by taking advantage of group nodes, and also take a look at why combining two normal map textures together is actually pretty hard and what there is available for us to do it properly. I'll leave links to the necessary blend files and resources somewhere around this video. Just to try and get into why this is useful from a practical point of view, I've got the road idea again, the one with the simple flat planes that we're mixing together. And using the process from the previous tutorial, I've rendered out the base color and the roughness and the normal map out into these three textures, which are now going into this principal shader. Really simple setup. And so we've simplified all those procedural nodes that we were using that we had in the original multiplane setup, now just into this very simple single plane. But as we say, that was just a bunch of simple layered planes. What if we had some other cool meshes that we wanted to use as part of our end texture too? So for example, I've got this little roadside that I've built. Mostly we're using image textures here, but we have a little bit of modeling going on. Really simple stuff, just a simple curb there and a little bit of a paving slab. I found these pavement textures, by the way, through textures.1, just a quick search here. And I'm using something from CCO Textures, this tactile paving, and from Texture Haven. We've got these very nice seamless pavement textures as well. So massive thanks to them as always for these great resources. And jumping back into Blender, another non-flat plane bit of geometry can be found if we scroll a little further down in the outliner. I have this little rock reference on the side of the road here. This is a lot larger than it should be really. I mean, we're gonna kill a lot of people if, if driving down here with this, so it shouldn't really be this big. But let's say we had these various different models together. And if I hit zero on the numpad to jump into the camera, actually I'll go control space just to make this a little clearer. So what we should be able to see from our camera here is a dashed line that I'm gonna select, which should show the renderable border of the camera a lot more clearly. And it's actually very, very easy to encompass this sort of geometry and not just flat planes, because if we just set this rock to only show its base color, so control shift click on this, thanks to the node wrangler add-on, it's gonna automatically just pipe that into an emission shader for us. Same with this here, if we select the road and just control shift click on the base color, we could now at this point start to render out passes and build a new material which has both the road and the rock in it. And that should actually work okay for the normal map pass as well. But I do wanna focus on that a little bit more in detail. Something else that I just wanted to quickly mention was that we could of course change our camera's position here. So I'm selecting it G, X, negative two, just to move it over. And now all these image textures, this bit of geometry, the procedural noise that we've got working with the image textures, the normal maps blending together, all of that we could just convert into just one material instead, just with a base color, roughness, and normal map pass if we wanted to. Another idea would be to just widen the aspect ratio a little bit more. So let's put this back with GX2 and then enter and then control space just to get over to our output settings. And let's double the X axis. So let's just times two on there for 4096. And then let's come over to the camera settings. Since we're just getting two units on the X axis here, let's double that as well. So just type in four. Now we could render all this out as just one material. For now though, I'm just going to control space and reset that to two and reset the X axis resolution down to 2048 instead. And let's take a look at this rock in a little bit more detail. So instead of using this procedural texture, let's say we wanted to generate the normal map. How might we go about that? Cause this isn't just a simple plane. Well, we've got this bump node that we can just use. There's nothing going into this right now. So there's no textures are influenced this whatsoever. But then we want to add one, multiply by 0 0.5 and shift the gamma on it. And now that is working really well. We can double tap R and rotate around. And you can see that always on the sort of lower right of it, we're getting the red color. And at the top, we're getting the green color. These are exactly the sort of colors we want. 
for a normal map within Blender. So if we switch over to solid shading, just make sure we're on our matte cap and the normal map matte cap, you see we have again the red on the lower right and the green at the top. And if we switch this back to look dev, we might be able to see that this doesn't change at all, but the background will like this. But a useful feature of this might be freeing ourselves from having to position the camera from right above. So for example, we could take a camera and place it in any orientation and then be able to take a screenshot of that and then be able to use that as a functioning normal map. And right now we couldn't do that because the green has now come down to the bottom left, which if we switch back over to our map cap view, you can see it shouldn't be like that. It should always stay roughly at the top and the red down at the bottom right. So switching back, how might we convert what we've got here so that we can kind of recreate create a normal map, map cap within our nodes in rendered view. We're starting with what we need, this bump node. So I'm going to press G and pull that out over here. And what we want to do is instead of using our world coordinates to display the normals, what we want to use is our camera because we want all this to shift depending on the orientation of the camera. So lucky for us, there's a really easy node that we can use to accomplish this. So I'm going to go shift A and go to vector, vector transform and just drop that in there. We want to take the world coordinate system and we want to convert that to the camera coordinate system. So now when we rotate around, you can see we're getting that red on the bottom right and we're getting that green towards the top. The problem is we're getting mostly yellow instead of blue. Now I don't know whether you've seen any crazy looking normal maps when they haven't quite worked out very well and you get a bake with some inverted normals. That's basically kind of how this looks. So this is what made me think all we probably need to do here is go convert, separate X, Y, Z, and then also combine X, Y, Z, and we'll leave X and Y as they are. But for our Z value, we need to basically invert that. So instead of it being minus one, we want to take that to one and we get way more of those kind of blue colors that we kind of need. Obviously it's not working right now because we need to actually invert what's coming out of here. So we can just use a math node and we're just going to plug this in and we're going to multiply it by minus one and then we can plug that into the z-axis and now we have replicated the normal map map cap that's basically all there is to it just to make it even more obvious while in object mode i'm going to go shift s and move the cursor to the selected here and then tap into edit mode and then go shift a and add in a uv sphere and i'm going to scale that way down with the s key press g to move that off and then i'm going to right click on this and then shade smooth and then tap back out into object mode and now let's take a look at our solid shading view let's zoom in even further on these and then switch back over to our rendered view and you should be able to see that for these objects here, even when we rotate around, so we're looking at them from a completely different position, it should still look exactly the same. Let's switch back over to our look dev view and see what else we can do with this. The major benefit of us being in look dev view now, and not just in the matte cap view of the solid shading mode, is that we can add our textures into this. So in this procedural shader setup that we've got, I've got this little bit of noise coming in to inform the bump node. Now we're not looking at any of that stuff at the moment. We're just looking at these nodes here that we've converted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the out of this noise texture, plug it into the height of this bump node. And you can see now it's looking kind of a little bit broken again. This is correct. It's just way over the top. So for example, it's trying to make these little stones look like the peaks and valleys of our bumpiness here are spiking in and out about a meter's distance, which of course is a bit wild. So I'm going to set that down to rather than a meter to something more like about three centimeters, which is still a little bit crazy, but it looks way better now, I think. And now it doesn't matter what angle we take a look at this from, the normals will always look correct. When we say look correct though, that depends on which color profile we're looking at. We're not really going to actually see the color of our normal map texture really in the end. It's actually non-color data. That's why we set our image node to non-color, which ends up making the normal map look a bit lighter when compared to sRGB. That is what our gamma node is doing, essentially allowing us to toggle between non-color and sRGB color spaces. Selecting this stone again, I'm just going to tab into edit mode and delete that extra little bit of sphere that we had with X. And now if I go control space on the major shader editor here, these nodes right here, I've simply placed into a group node. So you could just select these and go control G to create a new group, but we no longer need this. So I'm going to press X to delete and delete that extra bump node. So basically as we have here, we have this bump node already coming into this principal shader and we have the bump node here coming into this group node that I've already made. 
So if we tab into it, you can see basically the same nodes that we just done. So we have that convert to tension normal space there with the add one multiply 0 0.5 and there's the gamma node. And then there's our conversion of the world coordinates to the camera coordinates. And then we're flipping the Z. Now all I have here is a mix node to mix between this stuff and the bump node output before it goes through all that just in case for some reason we did want to see it as almost like a baked normal map so that it wasn't rotating around in the view sympathetically to the camera angle i've colored this one red just because that might be one we want to alter so just to try and give it a little extra attention because that gives us the control to shift every single object that uses this group since this node is inside the group if we make a change here it's going to impact every object so it should keep everything in the same color space whether we want to render it as non-color or in the srgb all right so let's tap back out of that and there's just a couple more things that i will quickly take a look at to help speed things up and make things with this workflow a little bit more useful and versatile on the previous video where I was demonstrating how to treat Blender a little more like Substance Designer, I didn't really take advantage of group nodes, uh, which would make changing all shaders to show the normal pass, for example, way easier. That's kind of what's happening here in this group node. And we'll take a look at that in a second. It's an idea we actually explored in the procedural asphalt texturing tutorial too, so I'm not really sure why I didn't include it. Anyways, thanks to Zogmaster for pointing that out to me. Much appreciated. Also, here's something he tweeted out going over a suggested node group setup to switch all materials in one go. I like how here you can select which pass to choose based on the number you enter, achieved using a series of math nodes set to greater or less than a certain value, I assume. He'll be releasing this any moment now. And also it looks like he's taken it a step further and added an auto bake to it too, to switch to each pass automatically. Along the same lines, there are some other similar solutions out there that people let me know about. On the Blender market, we've got Simple Bake, which looks like it has some pretty nice options. And there's also a free add-on available here by Daniel Engler, which was updated only a few days ago from the looks of it. Taking a more detailed look at this image here shows some of the usefulness of that too. So it's great that there's plenty of people taking an interest in this kind of approach. So I'm doing a kind of similar idea here with this group node. I'm taking the principal shader out and plugging it into here and I'm taking the various different passes and splitting them just before they enter that principal shader just so that we can separate them within this group. So if we tab into it, you can see the various different passes just get channeled into emission shaders and then we have a bunch of mix shader nodes to switch between them and the ones i've colored red are the main ones to worry about really so if we want to see the normal map we just slide this up if we want to see the base color we'll slide this one up and if we want to see the roughness we'd slide that so it's a little bit of a simpler setup but let's see this in action so let's tab back out into the main node network control space to minimize this view and i'm just going to make sure that all the shaders have this master shader switcher within their nodal network so for example if i select this we're currently just looking at the normal map so i'm going to switch that back to non-color by the way and then come back over to here and then Control shift click this i'm going to select the little rock there and just make sure this is hooked up Control shift click it and i think everything else should be good to go with this object if we take a look on the materials tab you can see there's a few and if we don't want to have to come over there what we can do is just take a look at the various different slots that we've got here so i'm going to load up pavement a and we can load up the curb and it looks like everything's all set up correctly so that means that anytime that we make a change within this group node it should affect everything so i'm going to hit seven on the numpad to take a look from the top orthographic view and we can see the lighting taking effect here so we're seeing the results of all of our principal shaders here well let's select back on one of these find the group node tab into it and now if we wanted to see the entire normal map pass all we have to do is just slide that up to just declutter the view here we could click on this button here or we could use shift alt and z as a shortcut for that let's say we've taken a render of what we need there let's take a look at the base color just slide that up and then also if we wanted the roughness we could just slide that up and then once we're done we can just slide these down all right at this point i'd like to add a shout out to marco tatalovic for suggesting to also add a note about mixing together normal map textures and also pointing me at this blending in detail article so why is this useful? We can mix together a single normal map texture and bump node textures easily enough since they have different nodes that we can daisy chain together. However, if we had two normal map textures that we wanted to somehow combine together or daisy chain together, then it isn't immediately obvious how we might go about that. Occasionally people might just try to simply overlay two normal map textures together 
that can work in very simple cases, but it's definitely not correct. For example, if you have a low poly mesh that is using a normal map that has been baked from a high poly mesh in order for it to shade correctly, then adding a second normal map on top for extra detailing will probably break the main first base normal map texture. That is where this blending in detail article comes in and the amazing work done by these guys. From this article, Marco created a blend file that converted this information into a node group and it works perfectly. So many thanks for that. I was also pointed to this blend file from five years ago on blend swap by Rad Capricorn that I've loaded up here in this scene. Inside the blend file, it has a group node called normal map combine, which we could just append out of there. This also happens to have a slider to affect how strongly to mix in that second normal map. Let's jump back into this road scene and this little pavement area here, this tactile pavement that I've got, we can use this just to demonstrate this in practice. So here's our normal map combine node going into our normal map vector node. And we have this time this tactile paving texture and we have this brown mud dry texture and we wanna try and mix them together. You may have noticed that on this node, there isn't really a way to fade the base. In this case, the mud dry normal map strength, which is why I've just added this mix shader here. So in the second socket for a normal map to have no effect we just need 0 0.5 0 0.5 in red and green channels and one for the blue channel and what we can do there if i just unhook this factor input and control shift click on this node you can see the more we slide this towards one the more we're going to just essentially kill the strength of our normal map but just to make it more interesting instead of just having a single uniform value throughout i'm just using a little bit of a noise texture here sending that through a color ramp and then that can decide where where the details of this mud dry normal map shine through so if I just plug that back into the factor, we'll get these patches. All right, so that goes into the base. This one's going into the detail. So if we control shift click on that, we can decide how strong we want our detail now. So that is just simply going into the normal map node, which is then in turn going into the principal shader. And then again, as before, we're just using that master shader switch just so that we can make universal changes. All right, so that should wrap it up. As mentioned at the start, you should find various links where you're watching this video to be able to download the various resources that I'm using here. If there's any questions, amendments, additions, anything at all, we'll add it into the comments. So I'll see you out there and catch you next time.